town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light, the hopes and fears of all the years 
are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth. And praises sing to God the King and peace to men on earth. How silently, how silently. The wondrous gift is given, so God imparts to human hearts the blessing of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born to us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. O come to us, abide with us. Our Lord, Emmanuel. Good morning and welcome to New Life Online and welcome to the beginning of our Christmas program. Uh, this is kind of the vibe I was going for, but this is as Christmassy as I could go. We're delighted to have you join us, whether you're joining us for the first time or whether you join us every single week. My prayer is that today as we start to begin to look at the Christmas story at this Christmas season, that that story will inspire you, that that story will remind us of what Christmas is actually all about and remind us of Jesus, the real reason for this season that we're in. It says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, it says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. I want to tell you that Christmas is the announcing of the greatest news that the world could ever hear. Emmanuel, God is with us. Let's join in these songs of worship this morning and lift up the name of Jesus and remember why there is joy for the world today.
But what an amazing line that is. He rules the world. And Lord, that's what we declare this morning as we come to worship and meet together. That Father, you rule, Lord, over everything in life, over our nation, Lord, over this world right now. That Lord, you rule the world. And I thank you, Lord, that your rule will never end. Father, today as we join together across these islands, inspire faith in our hearts today. Lord, help us to look to you for more. And Lord, let us believe for greater things to come in these days we live in. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to find out what's happening now through Sarah at New Life Kids. Good morning, Kids Club and all of our New Life Church families. In the Kids Club video this week, Mary and Joseph took on a huge responsibility. But God was with them to help them to bring Jesus into the world and to take care of him. God sent Jesus to earth to show us how to live and love God's way. That's why we celebrate Christmas. But that's not all. Jesus came to earth so that he could die on the cross. And why did he do that? To save us from our sin. Sin is when we choose to disobey God. Sin is like lying. Stealing. Making fun of others. Saying spiteful things. And disobeying our teachers and parents. Sin makes us dirty and messy on the inside. And it hurts others too. It makes a big mess in the world around us. And that's a problem because God can't be near sin. But God is not afraid of sin. Christmas reminds us that God got into the mess of the world to save us from it. God's son Jesus lived a perfect life and he loved people no matter how yucky and dirty they were with sin. And when the time came, he took that whole mess of sin upon himself. Even though he never did anything wrong, he chose to die on the cross and take the punishment for our sin. He took our sin away. And after he came back to life, our sin stayed dead. Isn't that wonderful? God loves us so much that he chose to get into the mess to save us from it. Now we can show love back to God by living his way, just like Mary and Joseph did. Great, Sarah. Here's some things that you can get involved with now at New Life News. It's Christmas! Almost. Ariana's on annual leave this week, so it's me! Welcome to New Life News. Here's what's coming up this week. Our Christmas markets have now launched. Thank you to all our vendors who have taken part and who have donated to Empathy International. We've got almost 20 vendors who are selling a range of Christmas gifts ranging from two pounds. So there's something for everyone. Please support our vendors as they've been so generous in supporting Empathy International. Get online and see what you can buy for family and friends this Christmas. Shop local. Also, if you'd like to donate to our Empathy International appeal, there's still time. Just put your donation in the New Life Shetland account and market Empathy International. We've raised almost £300 so far, which is amazing, but we'd love to raise a little bit more. So please, please, please consider donating to Empathy International this month. 
On Wednesday the 9th of December, we have our Women's Christmas Chosen event. There's over 30 of you signed up now, which is amazing, but there's still space for more. So if you would like to be a part of it, get in touch with us and we can send you the Zoom details or sign up through Church Suite. It starts at half past seven till half past eight and Matt and Claire Hooper will be hosting the event. On the 12th of December, we have our live nativity scene at Harrison Square. Come along between one to three and you'll get to see Mary and Joseph and some animals. We'll be giving out candy canes and we'll also just be giving people an invite to church. So come along if you can help pack up or set down as well, that would be great. Come at 1 p.m. if you'd be able to do that, we would so appreciate it. Thank you to all the youth who came to our youth event on Friday. It was a sellout, amazing. We'll be having other events coming up over the next few months, so keep an eye on our social media page or keep in contact with Tim and Rachel. Our Ignite Youth Bible Study is still running on Mondays and we have our youth hangout on Thursdays, so be there. We're having our New Life Carol service on December the 23rd at 7pm. We'd love to see you there. We want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's signed up to help with the Christmas and New Year meals delivering to people who are in need in the community. We've had a great response but we need, still need a couple of drivers, especially on Christmas Day. So if you're able to spare a few hours on Christmas Day to help someone in need, please get in touch. We'd be so grateful and so would the people who receive the food. Our hubs are back on next week. Some of you have been asking, what are hubs? Hubs are New Life Shetland Church in your local community. We have hubs in Bray, Aith, Sandveen and Papastour and we would love you to get involved. So please do sign up for the hubs, they'll be on advertised on Facebook, Church Online and also through Church Suites to so get signed in. We've had so many of you coming along which is just great. But there's new people who've joined New Life Shetland that we'd love to see your face. So please do come, we'd really love to see you. Church will also be online as usual, 11am. See you there. Well, it's December. The Christmas lights are going up and I know some of you have got beautiful trees up. And have you started an advent calendar? Remember, only open one door each day. Christmas will not come any quicker if you open them all at once. This year, we can't have our family Christmas movie night. But don't worry, Little Elves will be delivering all of our Kids Club families a movie night goodie bag this week. All you have to do is choose the Christmas fil film and we'll provide everything else you need. Look out for Santa's Elves delivering movie night goodie bags this week. And if you are a family with primary age children who regularly watch but don't receive a weekly Kids Club email, please get in touch. We would love to deliver a Kids Club Christmas movie night bag to you too. Now, I need your help. If you're in Kids Club, we would love some pictures or paintings of the first ever Christmas. You might paint Mary and Joseph traveling to Bethlehem on a donkey, or three wise men riding their camels following the star, or the shepherds on a hill surrounded by a sky full of angels. You choose the picture, and once it's finished, ask someone in your family to record you talking about the picture. Who's in it? Where are they? And what's happening? Please get your recordings sent to me by the 11th of December so that we can put them together for the recorded Christmas carol service. And one more thing. On the 18th of December, we will be having a Kids Club Christmas Zoom Games evening. It will be at six o'clock on Friday the 18th of December. Look out for the details to join in this week's Kids Club email. And don't forget your Christmas hats. See you next week. 
great stuff. Some lots of things there coming up that we can get excited and look forward to. Particularly, I want to draw your attention to the first Sunday in January, where we're going to be back in Sanvain. Church is going to be open. We're going to have live worship. We're still going to have an online presence. We believe online is here to stay. And I know some of you guys have just joined us online for the first time so in, in March and beyond. And uh, we're glad to have you with us. And we're not going to forget about you. But in January the 3rd, we're going to go back to Sanvain. We're going to have two Sunday morning services that you'll be able to book in for soon. And in the first one, we're going to have a kids program so that you families can come along and experience church live and in the flesh. We're going to have more details of that in, in the coming weeks. Uh, this week, I want to remind you, why not check out our Christmas markets and purchase something for Christmas. Purchase a present. Guys, go and check out and see if there's anything you think that your wives would like for Christmas. Be prepared in advance rather than just go to Tesco's on Christmas Eve and hope that you'll find some perfume or something like that. Anyway, uh, just want to say a huge thank you to Tiff and to Tim for setting that up. And uh, we pray that the money that's raised through that will be such a blessing to Empathy International. You know, over the last nine months as we've walked through this season of COVID, we've heard from different people's stories of how God has helped them or different people in different areas of society and what's taking place. And this week I thought it would be great to hear from another area of society. And, you know, very often what we hear when it comes to politicians is we hear a lot of things that people say negatively towards our politicians. And this week I thought it would be great to uh, talk with our local MSP and ask her, Beatrice Wisher, a little bit of what's, what life has been like in politics for her over these last nine months. You know, the Bible encourages us to pray for our politicians and I pray that we do that. But we're going to hear from her how, uh, you know, what the kind of challenges has been with that and also at the end have the privilege of, of praying with her. So let's listen and hear what Beatrice has to say. Well, it's a great privilege this morning to welcome our local MSP, uh, Beatrice Wisher, with us to New Life Online. Beatrice, we thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, many of us will have seen your name on a poster or, you know, we've maybe seen your picture in the, in the paper as we drive around Shetland or see, uh, pick up the paper. But I just was keen to find a, a little bit about the real person uh, behind the, the poster. So... For those who don't know you, which I suppose as, as a lot of us on, online here, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I, well, I guess I can say that I, I started my life in Lerwick, uh, actually not far from where I now live. Um, and I've lived most of my life in, in Shetland. And uh, I come from a, a family, I have five brothers and sisters, so we were a big noisy family. And uh, we lived in the in the flat above the Shetland Times bookshop, and so grew up in the in the middle of town. And um, later, when I married, I had three children. So I've got three wonderful daughters and five grandchildren, and they're obviously the the centre of my life. Um, and a, I don't know where I'd be without them. They've been a massive support to me. Uh, through the years, but especially during this, this this period of lockdown, which I think everybody has found challenging. Yeah, so, you know, you're obviously, as we said, the local MSP, and that's been a fairly recent role that uh, you've taken on. How, how did you get into that current role? Well, I've, I, I suppose the, the growing up in a family that was obviously interested in uh, politics and there was always discussions around the kitchen table about the, the current affairs of the day, whether they were local, national or international. And so there was always an interest in what was going on. Um, and it was only later on when I became involved with a, with a local party um, as a volunteer. And then I went to work for Alistair Carmichael, the MP. Um, so I did that for 14 years while still volunteering for the party. Um, and then if, uh, it was Tavish Scott's um, resigning from, from the post and I saw the opportunity. So I thought, well, I'm going to try that and see where we go. I was by that, I had by that time, um, been a, I was elected in 2017 as a, as a councillor um, and I was enjoying the work there. So I, I, probably didn't 
I suppose you could say I'm not a career politician. <laughs> I didn't set out at the beginning of my life to become a politician, but I think everything that I've done up till now has probably taken me to where I am. Very good. So, so what would you say you like best about the role that you do? Oh, I think definitely it's it's being able to help people um, in in an in an individual capacity as well, um, and that's certainly the level of casework that I mean all MSPs and, and parliamentarians have received over the the course of the last few months has been more than we've ever known. But it's being able to help people find the information they need or cut through bureaucracy or um, I suppose we're coming up against the sort of frustrations of um, big corporations and not being able to cut through that. Um, and I think a recent example is of uh, it was in the in the press recently was about people's electricity bills. So being able to make a difference to an individual um, is I always find when I get a good result, I feel I've done something, I've achieved something for somebody. Brilliant. So. I mean, this season has been very challenging for, I suppose, every area of society, you know, families and in the workplace. And, you know, we've had to work through some of these different challenges ourselves as a, as a church and, you know, work our way through the legislation. So um, and I know I've been in contact. So I would say apart from the letters that you've received from me, which hopefully have been uh, not too challenging, what's been the biggest challenges that you've faced throughout this season of COVID? I think, um, I suppose there's two aspects to it. It's um, trying to help people find, because it's been such a quick change in position, um, and making sure that information that you're looking for to pass on to a constituent is the correct information. You don't want anybody, you know, getting something that wrong because we're all trying as much as possible to live by, to live by the rules and regulations. The other side is the is the is the is the bigger picture as well in terms of the responsibility of the legislation. For example, on coming up on uh, Thursday, as the COVID committee will be looking at um, the restrictions that were passed last Thursday, and and you do feel the weight of that responsibility to make sure that you are making decisions that are right for everybody in Scotland, not just for your for your constituency. So, that, so there's two two sides of it, and, um, and making sure you're making rationed and reasonable um, decisions on behalf of everybody. I think that's great, and I think that you know that's a lot of the side of things where people don't see with certain rules. People don't see the weight that people carry with that, and you know decisions being made that will affect uh, other other people. One of one of our church values is we have a set of church values and one of them is to visibly serve our community and uh, you know that's I suppose a, an ever-changing uh, thing within the, the, the way that things are in the world today. Can you see any areas that as a church that maybe we could better serve our community than we have been doing? I'm interested that you say that that's actually the service of your community is something that I resonate with. Um, uh, Quite some time ago, um, I was asked to join the Rotary Club of Shetland and their motto is service above self. And that's something that has stuck with me throughout. I'm no longer a, a full member of the club, but um, I that's something that's stuck with me and it's very much what I, I feel. It, it is serving your community. And I think that the church has done a, a, a fantastic job in serving the community in, and, and, and being able to have adapted over the over these last few months to make sure that you're reaching out to, to, to people. I'm not sure there's anything specific I could say that you, you should do, but I think just keep doing what you're doing. Well, thank you. Well, I was wondering as well, how as a church, you know, you obviously mentioned the weight that you carry, the different roles that you have. How can we pray for you as a church? I think if you could make, help me, guide me through making the right decisions. And if I feel I've got that, that behind me, then that will help. Um, it's just being able to be sure that we're, what we're doing is, is, is right for everybody. And I know that there'll be people who say, you know, they disagree with this rule and that rule and, 
what have you. And I understand that because you can't please everybody. But but knowing that um, full consideration is given to everything that you do. Um, so so knowing there's a bit of support there would be would be good. Great. Would you mind if I pray with you just now? Well, before we finish. I don't mind at all. Father, I thank you for this time that we've had today. Uh, Lord, just talking through some of the roles and responsibilities that Beatrice has. Lord, thank you for uh, that sense of weight in serving the community that she feels. And, and Lord, as, as your word reminds us to do, to pray for those in authority. Lord, we, we take this time to pray for Beatrice and others who are serving the communities and the various uh, different constituencies that they represent. Lord, we pray that you will help them make the right decisions. I pray that they will know your strength and your support. And Lord, I pray that as churches that you will help us as we serve our communities. Lord, I pray that, uh, Lord, you will help us and give us wisdom in better areas in which to do so. Lord, I just pray your blessing upon Beatrice and our family. And Lord, may she know your peace and your presence as she serves her role well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, John. No, thank you for taking the time. It's very much appreciated. It's no bother, and, and if there's ever anything else I can do, I'm still looking to find out the the reasons behind the singing restrictions. It's interesting. Um, uh, you're not alone in wanting to know that you, you know why why you can't sing in in congregations that are socially distanced. So we're trying to find out if we can make things improve that. Yeah, well, we very much look forward to that day. <laughs> I know how I know how I know how much it means. Yeah. You know, I just want to encourage you, keep praying for our politicians and for those that are making decisions. I, I, you know, Beatrice mentions there about the weight that she carries. And, you know, I think that's a big thing. And uh, I remember a number of years ago, I remember watching Bear Grylls as he prayed with Barack Obama. Now, obviously, we're talking on a far higher, greater weight level there. Uh, well, Barack Obama was still the president of the United States. But, but I do believe it's so important that we do pray for those that are in government as they do make these uh, decisions. We're going to join this morning and remind us of the one who came. Remind us the one of who's deserving of all praise, glory and honour. Let's lift up the King of Kings today before we come to the Word. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise
This morning we're going to begin our Christmas sermon series and we're going to look at the, the topic of Bethlehem while they were there. It says in Luke chapter 2, it says, At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He travelled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. I remember where I was on the 11th of September, 2001. I'm sure many of you guys remember where you were on the 11th of September 2001. There was this moment where we saw the shocking images of planes hitting the Twin Towers in New York and seeing the aftermath and the things that took place afterwards and obviously that incredibly tragic event. It was that generation's JFK moment. They say that you remember, if you were alive at that time, where you were when JFK were shot. But there's lots of moments in our life where we were there, where there was times where we remember where we were or things happened while we were there. A number of years back, uh, my, we went to visit my sister in Sydney in Australia. And while we were there, the British and Irish rugby team, the Lions, were playing against Australia. They were on their tour, which happens every four years, and it rotates around New Zealand, Australia, and South Africa. But it just so happened that while we were there, the final of that rugby was taking place in a stadium in Sydney that wasn't too far away from where my sister stayed. And I was pretty certain that I wanted to be there. And I tried to get tickets and I phoned up the, in Britain to see if I could get tickets for this, this event. And the only tickets they did was part of a tour. And the cheapest tickets that they could offer me as part of this tour for me and my son to go and watch the rugby was something ridiculous like two grand, which was never going to get paid for. When Especially when the, the face value tickets were, were less than 50 Australian dollars. And uh, I remember uh, trying my best. And I knew Joel, they didn't even have to pay because he was only a kid. He could actually come and sit on my knee. I, I, I'd looked at all the terms and conditions because I knew that this was happening while we were there. And so the night of the, the, uh, the, the game, I went to the stadium. I tried a number of different outlets. I tried my sister to get me tickets from Australia, all these different things. And that night, I went to the stadium. And I had Joel on my shoulder and he had a ticket, a, 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 a placard saying, we're looking for a ticket. And we walked around the stadium and there was nothing and then we walked on our way back and just on our way back there was these guys wearing kilts and they says, are you looking for a ticket? I says, yeah, we're looking for one. I said, I only need one. He says, well, I can sell you one. One of our friends has not came to the game. And so he sold us this ticket at face value. And me and Joel, we sat there and we watched. And it was the deciding match and the British and Irish Lions won. It was the, one of the best sporting events I've ever been at. And I can say that that happened while I was there. You see, I was reading through the Christmas story this year. And I read this phrase and it says, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. While they were there. As I said earlier, there's lots of stories and lots of things that have happened in our lives while we were there. Maybe you've been in a place where you've been in the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, maybe you've been in certain places with friends where something memorable took place or, or you remember an event that happened while you were on a holiday somewhere or something like this. But this morning, I want to say that where Mary and Joseph were at this Christmas time, this first Christmas story that we read of, that this was nothing random about this. That this was all part of God's divine plan. That while they were there, that the baby would be born. And this morning, I want to look at three aspects of this. There's the they aspect. While they were there. Mary and Joseph, that's the they we're also going to look at while they were there, where there was. It was Bethlehem at the present location at that time. And it says that the time came. So we're going to look at that aspect, the timing aspect, a location aspect, a person aspect, and a timing aspect. I was thinking of this phrase, while they were there, the time came for the baby 
to be born. And really that's the verse that we're going to frame our whole Christmas program around this year. You see, one of the things of life is we are here. Right now we are here. While we are here right now. You know, if you look back over the last year, you know, many times you'll have heard this phrase, I can't believe we're here. It's been strange. You know, I've been watching a documentary about a football team recently, and it's interesting that it was filmed just before and during the, the pandemic when it hit. And it was interesting because, you know, they were talking through the, the chief executive and they were saying, I can't see how stadiums will close. He says they'll have to close schools, public transport. No one could really have scripted this at the beginning of the year. Now look where we are. The thought of, of uh, you know, some of these things is, is, seems to be uh, quite far away still. And, you know, without question, we're in a unique time in history. People will be writing about these days in the future. The pandemic of 2020. But here's the thing. We're here. We can't change where we are. Maybe we would like to. But while we are here, what is God doing in us, in this place, in this time right now? You see, lots of people throughout scripture and history find themselves in places and times that are challenging. You know, we all go through seasons that are great, but we also go through times which have maybe, you know, where we face that season of difficulty. You know, it's very rare that maybe we go through something as collective as what we've gone through uh, just now. But many people, as I said, down through history, and particularly in Scripture we read of, people who have, you know, found themselves during their time going through a season of challenge, whether that be Joseph. You know, That's a different Joseph from the one that was married to Mary. But Joseph, who gets thrown down a pit, who's human trafficked into slavery. He's falsely accused. He finds himself in prison. But it keeps saying this phrase, the Lord was with Joseph, while he was there. The Lord is with us while we are here. I'm so grateful that we can know that today, that while we are here in this season of life as a nation and as a people, that God is with us. And I pray that as we look at this series, that while COVID in some ways is a lens of which we maybe can look through the last year and look through where we're at right now, that actually we can realize that while we are here, or maybe the season of your life is something that maybe you're marked by something else right now. Maybe you're going through a time of bereavement. Or maybe you're going through a time of celebration. Whichever season you find yourself in just now, while you are there, I pray today that we will see the hand of God. And we'll, that through this this morning that we'll recognize that the hand of God is with us while we are here. And you know, the Christmas story, I want to say, becomes more special to me and more alive to me every single year. And I pray that as we look at it this year, that it will become more alive for you as well. You know, this morning, as we start by looking at this phrase, I pray that this story will be fresh to you. That wherever we find ourselves, whether that be collectively or individually, that we'll realize that God is at work in us, in this place, at this time. So while they were there, while they were there, Mary and Joseph, while they were there, you know, as I said, I'm fascinated by the characters of the Christmas story. You know, we can talk about the heroes of the faith, but, uh, you know, Mary, maybe it's because, you know, some of our Catholic, uh, those in the Catholic side of the faith, you know, they pray to Mary and, uh, you know, maybe we sometimes have distanced ourselves a little from that. But I'm not sure that she always gets the credit that she deserves as a hero of the faith in our tradition. You know, her response, Mary's response and her willingness in the middle of all that it meant, what it could have meant for our marriage, what it would have meant for our life. You know, not even though she got a message from the Lord delivered by an angel, it was still an incredible weight to carry. An, ins an incredible burden that, would, that could, you know, weigh many people down. And the challenges that came with that must have been immense. Look at Joseph, who shows an incredible strength of character to trust what was revealed to him in the dream would come true. You know, I, I don't know, I dream a lot of nonsense at times, but Joseph trusted what the angel, that the angel appeared to him in a dream. And I love later on we hear of God appearing to Joseph in a dream as well. And, you know, God speaks to us in ways that, that he knows that he can speak to us as individuals. You know, Mary and Joseph, though, chosen by God, for this incredibly special purpose. They were there. You know, God knew them and he saw them. And this morning I want you to know that God knows you and that God sees you. 
You know, you, that might seem like a strange thing. But I want to tell you that God has not forgotten about you. You're not a mistake. You're not without meaning and purpose. God knows about you. Yeah, you watching this morning. God knows you. He knows your name. He knows who you are. And you know, we know who we are because we know whose we are because we belong to him. You know, we'll never be tasked with carrying the Messiah in the same way that Mary and Joseph were. But we are all tasked with carrying the message of the Messiah to a world that needs to hear. And God wants to use you. He wants to use me and to, to do that. And I want to say that God knows who you are. You know, you might feel ignored today, but I, I tell you, God specializes in choosing the ignored. We mentioned Joseph before. Or look at David who was forgotten when the rest of his brothers were, were, were brought before Samuel to see who would be chosen as the next king. Or look at Moses who for 40 years ran away from Egypt to the wilderness. But God never forgot about him even though he was in the wilderness. Or the disciples who were like these failing fishermen. And God specializes in choosing the ignore. You know, you don't need to be known in the natural or have a name that's, that, that's been up in lights or whatever. All we need to do is have the right heart. Because if we have the right heart, we will get the attention of heaven. You know, I've realized that God has a different measuring stick when it comes to measuring those who, who he wants to use in special ways. You know, God must have seen Mary and Joseph in a backwater town called Nazareth. You know, just look at what later on the, the, the Nathaniel says about Nazareth. He's like, what good can come from there? And he chose them. Why? Because God, there's, nobody is forgotten in the eyes of God. You know, I wonder if, if God can see or could see where Mary and Joseph were. He can see where you are right now. You know, I want to say that if you're in pain right now, God sees you. If you're on your knees right now praying for something to happen, God sees. If you're getting on with life and humbly serving the Lord, God sees. He saw where they were. Now it's interesting because it says, well, they were there because God led them obviously to Bethlehem. That's part of the story of this Christmas story. It takes place in Bethlehem. While they were there. Insignificant Bethlehem. It says in Micah chapter 5, it says, But you, O Bethlehem, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet a ruler whose origins are in the distant past will come from you on my behalf. Now this is written 800 years before Jesus. The prophet Micah wrote this and it would, the chief priests at that time, they would have known that the Messiah was going to come from Bethlehem. He was going to be born there. The chief priests knew it, Herod knew it, they, because it was prophesied 800 years before. And that's why God positioned Mary and Joseph in Bethlehem, because God had written the script. It says of Bethlehem, you're only a small village among all the people of Judah. It's like Bethlehem was so insignificant. What's the deal with Bethlehem? Well, why would God use something, a place that's so small and insignificant to be the, the place where God is born on earth? Because the insignificance of Bethlehem contrasts with the great significance of the one who was born there. You see, it's, as I said, it's not because it's where David is from, but actually I believe God chose it because it was seemingly small and insignificant. See, God chooses the lowly not so that we can boast of our merits, but because we can boast of his great mercy. The word says that he chooses the foolish in the world to shame the wise. Or in a song that we sang before, from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. In lowly Bethlehem, the saviour of the world, was born. God brought Mary and Joseph there for a reason. You know, it's amazing what God does in what can seem like seemingly insignificant places. We all know that story of the feeding of the 5,000 where a boy brings his five loaves and two fish to Jesus. And what happens is it says in the passage, it says in a remote place, this is where they were, that this miracle took place. In an insignificant place, just somewhere in the middle of nowhere it would seem, God worked an incredible miracle. I shared recently how Tiff and I, we were at the scene of where the Hebridean revival began. 
probably the most significant move of God in our nation in recent history. And it was like the most underwhelming experience. We drove through this village that just had houses basically on both sides and a church. And You know, I was expecting some kind of monument or something that had taken place. Or, you know, just something about it. And I can honestly say that as we walked, went, drove through it, it was like, it was like you could blink and you would miss it. Yet it was the scene of God doing something amazing in our, in our nation. And I want to tell you this, right? God does incredible things in insignificant places. That's why he brought them to Bethlehem, because he does incredible things in insignificant places. You know, where you live right now, it might not seem significant. That's just the kind of place that God uses. You know, that's one of the things. Why don't you trust God to do something exciting about where you live? It's one of the reasons why our hubs have been so excited to me. And, and, you know, in the future, when things go back to normal, this locality aspect of church has to be not just, uh, not just the local aspect and not just the whole together again. We look forward to that day as well. But I want to say we'll never reach these great islands by just staying in Lerwick. God actually has a plan for these smaller places on the outskirts of islands and the small little communities in the middle of nowhere because that's the kind of place that God does the work that he does. Why can't God do something amazing in Sandwick, A, Trondra, Quark, Bray, Borough, Lerwick, wherever you're from, you can put that name there. God do something amazing in your place. Insert your town here. Why? Because God has always done amazing things in what can seemingly be insignificant places. Because He gets the glory. I want to tell you today, you're in your town for a reason, like Mary and Joseph were. God knew you would be where you are at this time. Whether you were born here or whether you moved here, God hasn't lost you. You can't run away from God. You can't get lost by Him. I want to tell you, you are there where you are for a reason. At the time God God brought Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. And it says this. While they were there, the time came. The time came. We love that. You know, in fact, at the beginning of this passage, it says that at that time, there was a census that was called. There was something about that time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 reminds us that there's a time for everything. And you know, the birth of Christ, I don't know why it happened at that time. All I know is that it happened at the right time. And it happened in God's timing. And timing is a huge part of trusting God. You know, taking a kid on a trip, I'm sure as parents we've all been there when you're on a long drive and a kid says, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And you know, I want to say that, that actually that can be exactly like us on the journey with God, on our journey of faith. You know, we're praying for things, we're trusting God for things, and sometimes they take a lot longer to happen than what we would like them to be. And, and, you know, we're all the same in that there, and we can be just like, God, are we there yet? God, why are we not there yet? God, why are we not there yet? But I want to say that when God put Mary and Joseph in the right place at the right time, the baby was born. You know, very often there's this gap period between what God has said and what comes to pass. You know, in this, like, we, we, you know, with the story of Christmas, there's a baby that's to be born in that nine-month period from when conception takes place till the baby being born. There's a, a, a timing aspect that you've got to wait until things are in the fullness of time, until things are, are ready. You know, I wonder how those nine months were for Mary and Joseph as they walked through that journey of, you know, Pregnancy, not being married, you know, the the different things that that would have brought culturally at that time upon them. But at the right time, the baby was born. And maybe this morning you need to trust in that, the timing of God. Maybe you've been waiting on something taking place. But I want to tell you, God's timing is perfect. And we need to realize that God has brought us here for this time. And he will work out his plan and purpose through us in his time. Instead of Esther, it says, who knows that you were brought for the kingdom for such a time as this? And I want to say, who knows but that you were born to Shetland for such a time as this? So, Bethlehem, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. They, Mary and Joseph, God knew them, 
God knows you. They were there. They were in Bethlehem. This insignificant town that God did incredible things in. The time came. The timing of God. I want to ask you today, where are you? God's, God asked that question to Adam right at the very start of the, of the story of the, of the Bible. When God was walking with Adam, Adam had sinned and, and it says God called out to Adam and God asked him where he was. You know, it wasn't because God had lost Adam. God knew exactly where Adam was. The thing was that he asked that question so that Adam could know where he was. You know, I want to tell you today that God knows where you are. But do you know where you are? Do you know that God has brought you here for such a time as this? Do you know that God knows you? Do you know that the place that you're in is significant? And God wants to do something in you and through you in these days and this time. Because why? Because that's what God does. Regardless of how insignificant you feel or the place that you're living in, God does amazing things through seemingly insignificant people in seemingly insignificant places at his time. God knows you. Where are you? You know, the time came. I wonder, what are you waiting for this morning? You know, that's two ways that, we could, that you can view that question. What are you waiting for? As in the what? What is it that you're waiting for? Or in some ways, there's a sense of, well, what are you waiting for? Get on with it. Go and do it. But I want to remind you this morning, in Bethlehem, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. Let's bow our heads this morning, wherever you're at in your homes today. I'm going to pray in a moment. But I want you to know, and I want you to remember that, that God knows where you are. God knows who you are. And if you don't know Jesus today as we begin this Christmas program and we start to look into the Christmas story over the next few weeks, you know, my prayer is that it will become alive to you. I wonder, do you know him? Because if you don't, then this season, this Christmas story can become significant to you. And if your head's bowed, we're just going to pray a prayer and you can repeat this after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you today, come into my life, forgive me of my sins, make me new. Today I make you Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, then just indicate by clicking raise, I raise my hand in the chat today. And one of our team, you click through for prayer and one of our team will pray with you. We'll get your address and send you a book that will help you on your journey. And uh, it won't cost you anything. It's just a book to, to help you on your journey. It's the Bible and it's the Christmas story in a way that, uh, that is real and relevant to the day and age that we live in. In just a minute, we're going to sing a song to close. And it's a reminder that God's a God of seasons. I want you to listen to the lyrics because some of them are amazing. That uh, He's the God of greatness even in a manger. It talks about if you're not done working, then God, I'm not done waiting. And there's a sense of that, that you know we're just submitting ourselves and our lives to his time. But before we do that, I just want to pray for each of our areas that we're in. And I want you to join in this prayer and to pray this uh, with me. And I'm going to leave a gap and I want you to say the name of your town in that place as we pray this together. So let's just repeat this prayer after me because God does great things in insignificant places. So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, do something amazing in my town of today. Lord, I pray that you will do something amazing in these towns and villages that we live in today. Let us see your kingdom come. Your will be done in each of these areas. In Jesus' name, we ask that you will use us to bring change and to, bring, to spread your gospel wherever you have placed us. Thank you that you've not forgotten us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship together as we close today. Like the frost on a rose Winter comes for us all Oh, how nature acquaints us With the nature of patience Like a seed in the snow
Thank you for joining us at New Life Online this week. It's been great to be together. Next week we're in our hubs in Aith and in Bray and in Sandveen. In Sandveen it's going to be a bit more of a live experience. Um, so do sign up early to avoid uh, being disappointed. We've only got limited space in these places. But we'd love you to join us at one of our hubs next week. May well, if we can be of any help, please do get in contact through one of our New Life social medias uh, or contact us direct. Remember and check out the Christmas markets, but have a great week and we'll see you same time, same place next week. God bless.